Hey everyone, Jan here, codingwithjan.com. On August 13 of 2024, both Checkout.Liquid and Shopify scripts will no longer be supported. As a replacement, all checkout customizations have to migrate to the new checkout extensibility before this date. Now, in collaboration with Shopify, today I want to show you the five technologies that make up checkout extensibility, then also provide you with a step-by-step -step framework for migrating that you can also use with your clients. And of course, we also have a hands-on example prepared where we show you how to build a delivery date picker from scratch. So I hope you're as excited as I am and let's take a look. All right, so then let's get started by taking a quick look at checkout extensibility itself, because it's essentially an umbrella term that covers five different technologies. Namely, we have checkout UI extensions, which allow you to add custom content elements throughout the checkout, the branding API that we can use to change the look of the checkout, Shopify functions, which let you implement new business logic, such as bundle offers or hiding and showing different shipping methods, depending on items in the cart. Then we also have post-purchase checkout extensions. If let's say you want to have an upsell after a purchase is already made. And lastly, we have web pixel extensions that allow you to implement custom tracking snippets and event tracking. Okay, now each of these technologies definitely deserves a video on its own. And we've already been covering some on the channel and you can find great resources in the official docs. But in summary, checkout extensibility is considered an improvement because it's upgrade safe, app-based, higher converting, and also fully integrates with ShopPay. Um, that is Shopify's accelerated checkout, which was found to have a much higher order completion rate. Okay, so now we have a high level understanding of what's included in checkout extensibility. But what if your clients already have customizations in place right now? How do you go about migrating these? Here's the step-by-step -step upgrade path. First, we start with an assessment. That is to say, we have to identify the current customizations. And yeah, sometimes this is going to be quite obvious. There might be like huge trust banners or something, but sometimes customizations can also be less visible. For example, if they only appear if a certain country is selected. So therefore, the recommended way of going about this is by first conducting a visual review, yeah, literally going through the checkout process step by step and then taking note of anything that looks out of the ordinary. So this could be things like trust badges, banners or custom messages, address input validations like preventing post boxes, any extra input fields, font changes, changes to the color settings, anything like that. And here it can also be very helpful to create a new draft checkout profile because then you can preview what a checkout looks like without any customizations and it becomes much easier to spot the differences. Then after the visual review, the next part of the assessment is going to be conducting a code review which helps with identifying the customizations that might be less visible. So a good place to start would be the checkout.liquid file. And here Shopify recommends to look for any of the following things. Comments in any language, like HTML comments, JavaScript or Liquid. Then also keep your eyes open for any Liquid references or include statements. The same applies for JavaScript includes, especially if the domain looks third party-ish. And you also want to look for CSS of any kind, style tags, inline CSS, or further includes. And to be extra sure and make your life a bit easier, you can also grab the original checkout.liquid file and then your version and paste both into a string comparison tool. There are tons of free ones on the internet. And then you would see the differences side by side. The last step of the code review is then to check for any active Shopify scripts. That's fairly easy. First, you can check if the app is installed in the first place. And if so, if there are any snippets that are currently active. All right, so now the assessment is complete and you should be left with a list of existing customizations. And this is also a good time to reevaluate if maybe some are outdated or no longer needed or not even worth the technical overhead of migrating. But let's say you've identified at least one feature that you want to migrate. Then the next step would be to conduct feature mapping. And this is why it was so important to understand checkout extensibility from a high level first because now we can use the following diagram. So if your customization is supposed to add custom UI or content elements to the checkout, then you can use checkout UI extensions. If it's supposed to change the look of the checkout, then you can use the branding API. If you need to customize the backend business logic, you can use Shopify functions. If you want to display or offer something on a post purchase page, 
then post purchase checkout extensions would be the right technology. And if you want to track buyer or user behavior, you have to migrate your feature to a web pixel extension. And of course, you can also combine these technologies if your customization falls into multiple areas. Okay, and at this point, you've identified the features you want to migrate. You've identified the technologies you have to use. And this is where the rubber meets the road. Now we have to use these technologies and implement the features. But as you can imagine, there's only so much we can cover in one single video. And that's why you will find links to all the previous videos or the best resources for each of the technologies in the description. And I would suggest we rather move on with our practical example. All right, so then let's see how we could go about implementing a delivery date picker. I think this is an interesting example because there are so many different use cases out there. Um, could be like a flower shop that wants to deliver flowers on specific dates like Valentine's Day, or it could be like a service provider or catering service or a specific event if you sell like tickets, or it could even be a rental service and then you have to yeah, select rental dates or date range. Um, so yeah, many, many different use cases where you need dates. And according to our diagram, this is clearly adding custom UI to the checkout. So therefore we have to use checkout UI extensions. So then as a first step, I would get started in my partner dashboard and create a new development store really quick. So this is gonna be a store for testing and building. The store name could just be checkout extension date picker. Then we also wanna make sure to select the developer preview for checkout extensibility. That's really important. And lastly, I also want to start with a bit of test data. So then we already have some products in there and we can get started a bit faster. Let's create the store. Okay, so here we go, store was created. And as you can see, we also got some demo products in here. That's awesome. And what I also want to do is create or add at least one payment method so that we can later create a test order and see if the delivery date picker works. So let's go to settings. And then if we go to payments, here it seems like Bogus Gateway is already active. That's like a sandbox credit card provider. So it gives you like the callbacks, payment successful, payment declined and so forth. But beyond that, you can also just add a yeah, manual payment method and then uh, let's do bank deposit and just activate that. So with that in place, we're good to go. And now we can switch to our development environment. So here we are in VS Code. As you can tell, my working directory is set to a development folder on my desktop. And now we'll just get started by creating a new Shopify app from scratch using the CLI. So now it's installing all the dependencies. The app name can just be delivery date picker. I want to go with the Node.js templates. So now this new app here has been created. And next I want to navigate into my app folder and then run Shopify app generate extension. Now I have to go through the authentication process. So I will just follow all these instructions here. Select the right partner account. Yes, we are creating a new app. Name can be the same as our project. And here we have to decide what kind of extension we want to add. Web pixel, checkout UI extensions, functions. And we set checkout UI extension. So let's go with that. Extension name, internal only. So we just go with date picker here. And here we can select what we would like to work in. I would choose JavaScript with React. So now the extension was created successfully and we can also confirm this right here. Now we get this extension folder. And the two most important files are for one in the source folder, the index.jsx, and then also the Shopify UI extension config file. Now, before we proceed, let's try to run the app one time. So we can just use npm run dev. Here we now need to select our development store. So I'm going to go with checkout extension date picker. So it seems our dev server is properly running. And if you follow this preview link here, it will get you to the developer console. And now we can first of all go to app home one time to install the app in our store. Let's do that. So then let's just follow the flow, install app. So the app was installed successfully. And now we can already go ahead and preview our checkout. So you can just use the preview link or we go through the front end. So let's just add one product to the cart and then go to checkout. So right here, we can already see the banner that is coming from our extension. Um, let me show you this in the code files. So inside the source folder of our extension, you can see the index.jsx file. And here we import this banner component, which is used down here. 
and then we just render it to this extension point here. Okay, now as a first step, I want to move our component closer to the shipping methods because I think there a delivery picker makes more sense. And in order to do that, we can take a look at the extension point documentation. So here we find all the supported locations. And I'm interested in shipping. So we also have this preview image right here. So maybe, yeah, shipping methods render after would be a good destination. So back in our index.jsx file, the first thing we can change is this extension point right here where we render our component. So let's replace that with checkout shipping methods render after. Save this file. And this would actually have hot reloading. So we should be able to see the change right on the front end. But in this case, we also have to change the config file. And here you would see the extension points. So we gotta enter our new extension point right here as well. And whenever I change the config file, at least for me, it seems I have to restart the development server. So in order to do that, I'm just running npm run dev again. Okay, server up and running. Let's follow the preview link. Let's follow this link to the checkout. So as you can tell, now the banner is gone and let's go to the shipping methods. I'm just using a bunch of test data for now. And here, right after the shipping methods, we can see our component. So this has worked perfectly fine. Awesome. Then next, I want to start implementing the delivery date picker. And first, let's get rid of anything we don't need. So we don't need this banner here. We don't need these two statements. And then we also don't need these imports here anymore. All right, that's pretty clean. And in order to make my life a bit easier, I want to take a look at the pre-built UI extension components. So I don't want to reinvent the wheel. And here we already have like so many action elements, form elements, and coincidentally also a date picker, brand new. How epic is that? So then we can take a look at the documentation. We just have to import this date picker component. And this is pretty much how to use it. We also find further properties down here. But for now, we're mainly interested in the selected property and also the onChange method that I will show you in a second. And also really quick on that note, I would highly recommend that you always try to use the pre-built components as much as you can because Shopify and the dev teams, they put in a lot of thought. So you get accessibility out of the box or here in this case, you can see that we can enable and disable certain days of the week, which can make sense in a lot of use cases or it also adjusts to like the background color and accent colors. So it really saves you a ton of time and I would highly recommend it. Okay, so then let's see how we can use this component. First of all, we have to import it. And then we should already be able to use it down here. Let's save this. And since our development environment features hot reloading, we should already be able to see the changes right here. And it looks awesome, but it doesn't quite work yet. So we can't select any dates. So now in order to fix this, if you're familiar with React, your first impulse might be to create a state variable. So we could create this delivery date right here. And then we set the selected property to our variable. And then we also need to handle user inputs. So we can use the onChange property and set it to a new handle date change function, which we define right here. So if the date changes, we just use that date and update our state variable. Lastly, we then just have to import use state from React. And now we should be able to save this. And in the checkout, we are now able to select dates. That's amazing. But one problem we have now with React state is that it's not preserved. So if I go back and then forward again, we lose our state. And we also have to figure out a way to save this information and store it somehow on the order. And this is where meta fields come in very handy because we can use them to fix both at the same time. So back on the stores admin dashboard, let's go ahead and create a new meta field. So we can just search for meta fields right here. And I want to add a new one for orders. Add definition. Name can be delivery date or maybe we just use date for now. And the namespace is also going to be important. Um, it can be custom, but it could also be something like order details um, up to you. And then for the type, we can either select single text and store the date as text, or we can also just use a date picker, um, which I think would make a better impression. So let's use that. Yeah. Save this new meta field. All right. And then back in our code files, the first thing I want to adjust is our config file. So here we have to define all the meta fields that we will use. So let's uncomment this. And we can just say namespace is details. And then the key is going to be date. 
All right, let's save this. And yeah, when we save the config, we might also have to restart the app server, but let's do that in a second. First, I want to import two new functions in our index.jsx. For one, the use apply meta fields change function, and then also use meta field. And now instead of our state variable delivery date, we can use our newly created meta field. So we can define the same variable delivery date, but this time use meta field namespace details meta field key equals date. And then we can get rid of this right here. On the date picker itself, we now have to access the value property of that meta field because we're interested in displaying the current value. And then we also have to find a way to update the meta field on change. And here we can use the function that we just imported, use apply meta field change. Then we can get rid of everything we had before. And we can call this function in our markup. So let me paste this here. So I'm using the value keyword, which holds the date that was just selected. We forward that to our set delivery date function. And here are the parameters this function takes. We want to update the meta field, namespace details, meta field key is date, value type is going to be string, and the current date is stored in this value keyword. And this should already do the trick. So one more time, we're using the meta field to display the currently selected date. And if the date changes, we just update the meta field. So let's go ahead and save this and then also restart the development server because we made changes to our config. npm run dev again. Preview the checkout. So here we can see that the calendar still works. That's awesome. And if I go back and forward again, the state is also preserved because the meta field value doesn't change. And now let's also complete a test order and see if we can get the value on the back end. That would be really important. So continue to payment. Now we can either use Bogus Gateway or our bank deposit and then review the order. And let's ship this. Okay, order confirmed. Let's check on the back end. So here I went to the online store orders and we already had 10 in here because we started a development store with test data. So this is order number 11. And then we should find our new meta field down here and the value is also present. So this has worked perfectly fine and we can call it proof of concept. Okay, so now we're left with a simple but functional solution. And I know this can be upgraded a lot. Maybe you want to prevent dates in the past or only allow a certain date range. Or maybe you want to have a checkbox and only if it's checked, the calendar becomes visible. So now it really depends on the exact use case. And I think you can take it from here. This should be a very solid starting point and the video is already long enough. So let's wrap up everything we've covered so far. All right, and that's it for today's video. We certainly came a long way. We've seen what's included in checkout extensibility. We've seen the step-by-step -step upgrade path as well as one practical use case. So I really hope this was a helpful starting point. And now main call to action, start building your checkout customizations. Um, you have to be on the upgrade path anyways, and then you also enjoy faster performance, higher conversion rates, the full integration with ShopPay. And who knows, if you're fast, you might also have first mover advantage and then be able to turn your customizations into a successful public app. So I think there are some good opportunities there. And as always, have an amazing rest of your day. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'm gonna catch you in the next. Bye.